Westminster Confession, chapter 1, paragraph 10, on the authority of the Scripture. And this is a topic that we mentioned in the last video, that the Westminster Confession, which is an authoritative tradition of the Church, has written into itself that it is not the ultimate authority, but God's Word alone is the ultimate authority. It was written at an assembly by a group of pastors, and they say, these are the words of men, but only the Bible is the very Word of God. And so this book helps us to read the scriptures, but ultimately the scriptures alone are the authority in the church. And so the confession says the supreme judge by which all controversies of religion are to be determined and all decrees of councils, opinions of ancient writers, doctrines of men and private spirits, our individual opinions, are to be examined and in whose sentence we are to rest can be no other but the Holy Spirit speaking in the Scripture. Okay, the judge by which all of our opinions, all the opinions of the church, all the interpretations, all the doctrines, all the writings throughout the church are judged in light of the Scripture. And the reason for that is because the Scriptures are the covenant document by which God our King rules us His people. Let me explain what I mean by that. Um, the, the Bible uh, often uses the language of a covenant, which was uh, an ancient uh, practice when a greater king would come and help a lesser king who was maybe being attacked by enemies and the greater king would bring his army and rescue the lesser kingdom. And so they would form this covenant, this treaty with one another. And the greater king would say, I've saved you and now you are my vassal kingdom and I'm gonna write this document by which I'm gonna rule you. And these are all the obligations that you owe back to me as your suzerain, it's called the suzerain king. And so they would have a document by which the lesser kingdom was ruled. That's what the Bible is for us. God is our king, who's come and rescued us from our enemy, sin and death, and from the world and from the devil. He's rescued us and he's brought us into his home. And now he's given us the document that rules his kingdom, which is the Bible. Now, one of the things that's interesting about uh, this paragraph is it does say that the, the supreme judge is actually not the Bible itself, but the Holy Spirit speaking in the scripture. You see again, that combination of the spirit and the word of God that work uh, in accord with one another. You see that throughout the confession. And I talked about that in, in my first video, asking the question, what is the role of the Holy Spirit in our day? And this is the main answer is the Holy Spirit must apply the word to his church, to his world, and to individual people. The Holy Spirit applies the Word of God to us. Now, there are two tendencies that Christians have in our day. In our tradition, we're the Reformed tradition. Uh, we tend to put a lot of emphasis on the Bible. And so there may be people who err on the side of only reading the Bible and not relying on the Holy Spirit interpreting and applying the Bible for us. So they know the Bible, they can quote the Bible, they can uh, make logical statements about the Bible, but there's no presence of the Spirit. There's no reliance on the Holy Spirit. There's another error that can come more in the charismatic or Pentecostal tradition where people don't really use the Bible in, uh, in context or they don't use scripture to interpret scripture and, uh, or maybe use very little of the Bible but are constantly talking about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit said this to me or God told me this or the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. Uh, both of these are errors that the confession is trying to avoid. And uh, the supreme authority in our lives is the Holy Spirit applying the Word of God. And actually, you'll find out that the best versions of the Reformed tradition and the best versions of the charismatic tradition both study the scriptures intently, but are constantly asking the Spirit to, to enlighten our minds, to understand uh, the scriptures so that we can say, God is speaking to me by the Holy Spirit and through the scriptures. And so uh, that uh, combination of the Spirit and uh, God's Word is something that happens in people's individual personal lives. 
It's also something that happens in the church, as the church gathers to ask big questions about doctrine, about theology, about culture. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit to be our guide. And so the ultimate authority in the church is the Holy Spirit speaking in the scriptures. And we must keep the Spirit and the Word of God central to our community if we're going to honor the Lord and honor uh, the way of God's kingdom. So here is a question for your discussion. Why is it crucial that individual Christians and the church as a whole rely both on the Holy Spirit and the Bible? What happens if you leave out the Holy Spirit? What happens if you leave out the Bible?